Hey there, Commanders. So, uh, check this out. I thought, since I just did a ship build committed to, or optimized for, Guardian Sites, that I'd come in here and explain a little bit more about what these Guardian Sites actually are. This color-coded map that's going to pop up is the Inhabited Bubble. There's some systems around this color-coded map that show just generally where populated space is, but if I go over here to, uh, the standard map. There's a bunch of these bookmarks over here near the bubble. And you'll see right here is the Colsac Nebula where a lot of recent game activity has been taking place. So the Guardian Bubble, as it's sometimes called, or I just like to call it Guardian Space, is a concentration of sites. They occupy roughly the same volume as the bubble does, but there isn't as much stuff over there as there would be found in the bubble. Now there's two rough kinds of guardian sites. I'll bring them up on the map over here, or on my uh, other monitor. There's guardian structures and guardian ruins. Guardian structures are where you get your module and weapon and ship blueprints. These are much more interactive than a guardian ruin would be, and there's a lot more lore-wise that takes place around them. But all of it is important, and the major thing that you're trying to go after is this guy right here. Uh, this is a data terminal. Once you trigger and fully, once you arm and fully activate a guardian site, a little ball pops out here that you scan and you get your blueprint from. When you're farming for guardian materials, this particular type of site constitutes most of the activity. So it's important to understand how they work so that you can be in a good position to get this stuff on your own. It is easier if you do it as part of a group, but if you do it as part of a group, you have to be prepared to share some of the data. Since each run that triggers the site only produces one blueprint that can be retrieved by one player. However, a single instance with multiple arming and activations of the Guardian sites will produce a blueprint for each player that is in the instance, so long as there are enough relics available in the instance for everybody to collect. Now, it's for this reason that most people who farm guardian sites do it solo unless they're sherpaing someone through the site and showing them how everything works. Because inevitably, once everybody's got their data or you run out of guardian relics, you end up having to board flip, and it's impossible to keep a wing together when you board flip. You have to reform it from scratch and start over. And it just ends up being generally unfun and uncoordinated. There are some open play adventurers who like to hit up these sites, and for the most part, you don't have to worry about gankers since there's so many different sites. The odds of you happening to instance with one in open player are very limited, but if I'm being honest, the most efficient way to collect materials is solo play. Now, to run these sites, you need a couple of different things, depending on what you're going for. If you're trying to get a FSD booster, you need a module blueprint. And those are only available from sites that are compatible with the module profiles. Let me uh, see if I can find that here. You'll have to pause the video to get all of these in detail, but if you're trying to get a Guardian FSD booster, these are the major sites in Guardian space that you need to be familiar with. You don't have to visit all of them. One will suffice. So you've got a bunch of different options. I would caution you that some of these sites are orbiting the B star, and you might end up looking at extensive flight times to be able to get to them once you physically arrive in the system. Uh, there are lots of sites that provide weapon blueprints. If you wanted to go hunt Thargoids, these would be the sites you would want to hit up. You just have to pick one, whichever is convenient for you. And then vessel blueprints are guardian sites that have a little bit of extra gameplay you have to be aware of. They all work fundamentally the same way. You land at the site, there's these little towers that you have to activate and you start the process by driving up to where the data core is located and that arms the site. These little obelisks won't pop up until the site is armed so you have to drive up to this spot and you'll hear a noise and then some guardian drones will start popping out of the ground and that lets you know that you're good to go. And The obelisks will raise up and then you have to drive around to different points at the site to raise the different obelisks and then you shoot them with your SRV's plasma gun or if someone's in a fighter a small ship. They can use their energy weapons to trigger them, although it's much more difficult. And once all of the towers are activated, the data core pops up, and your selected player then 
collects a guardian relic or an ancient key. For vessel blueprints, it's the ancient key. You drive up to this little uh, blue dot on the ground and you eject your relic or key, and then the data core will become available and you'll be able to scan it. Uh, the ball only pops up after you eject your, uh, your relic or your key. I should be clear there. There are maps and resources available. I like to use Canon, um, but Canon itself references Obsidian Ant's video uh, on the different ruin solutions, so I recommend you go there or go to his channel, because uh, I probably can't produce content that's any better than his. And to be honest, I'm probably not in a position to produce anything that's that high quality. Uh, now you'll note here this uh, screen grab of a nav panel that there is a difference between guardian structures and ancient ruins. And the game differentiates them. Structures specifically produce the types of blueprints that you need to unlock specific tech broker modules while guardian ancient ruins do not. Ancient ruins are a whole different monster which Canon has judiciously cataloged in extreme detail uh, and there are a lot of them across the galaxy that we have identified, some of them far beyond the auspices of Guardian space. In fact, I think I have one bookmarked that is really far out. Um, ah, here it is, the Conflux Ruin. This is one I became aware of through a couple of friends, I think, in canon a while back. Um, but that is a Guardian Ruin, and it is ridiculously far from the bubble. And this is led to a belief that the Guardians were like a fully galactic civilization and that there's a ton more ruins out here that can be discovered and we just haven't found them yet. Although I'm pretty sure all of the sites that have been found are near nebulas somewhere and most of the nebulas in the galaxy that I think they've been mapped. They're, they tend to be a pretty big target for explorers to want to go out and hit. I think that's the only one that I have but there are others out, out here that I think other explorers have discovered. Uh, but as I open these different tabs, and you'll see here it differentiates sites as alpha, beta, and gamma. These are three distinct types of ruins that have a different layout to each other. Ruins were the first guardian stuff that you could find in the game. Uh, originally there were no mark-ins or, or lead-ins or anything. The first guardian ruin I believe was found on accident, a commander just flying around a planetary surface noticed a strange feature. Uh, but since then we've gained the ability to scan for them automatically using our ship's nav panels. They just pop up in the system once you get close enough. And there are three distinct types of Guardian Ruin sites. There's Alpha sites, which look like this, essentially an amphitheater with some uh, stuff attached on the outside. Beta sites, which are more expansive, hexagonal, have two amphitheater-like structures and a whole array of other little smaller uh, obelisks that you can go and scan. And then gamma sites, which are the most expansive and elaborate, have two amphitheater things in them and then some other stuff going on over here that are higher detail. As far as I'm aware, we haven't identified a specific purpose to these structures other than that they supported the Guardian AI that managed their entire civilization an AI whose story and relevance we've yet to fully explore in the game, so I imagine this will become a plot point in the future. These three sites don't furnish you anything but scan obelisk data. Now you do need obelisk data for some of the Guardian blueprints, so I recommend if you're going to farm that data that you hit up an alpha site because they're smaller and the circular more, I wouldn't call it symmetrical, but closer to symmetrical layout of the facility makes it easy to just orbit. I'll usually land my ship on one of these outer flanges here and I'll just drive around the outer circumference. I don't usually bother with the inner too much because it breaks the flow of gameplay a little bit. And you just orbit, scan all the obelisks, board flip, orbit, scan all the obelisks, rinse and repeat until you've got your data. I think certain types of data are more prevalent at certain types of sites, but I think you can get all of your data uh, by just hitting one site hard enough. You might hit one or two just to shake things up, but for the most part, when I need obelisk data, this is where I go, although I haven't needed it for more than a year now. I've unlocked all the Guardian stuff and there hasn't been any more added. Hopefully that changes. Now in addition to these three sites, uh, obelisk data, there are a bunch of artifact cairns. These are basically commodities, think of them like shipping containers but with special shapes. 
Each one is unique and can be used to trigger additional optional activities at different sites aside from the relics which you have to have in order to get blueprints from ancient ruins. Now, or I'm sorry, from guardian structures. Ancient ruins don't produce blueprints. You can pluck guardian relics from ancient ruins and I believe the game will let you deposit them in guardian structures. But guardian keys are unique you can only get them from Guardian Beacons, and they are specifically for acquiring fighter blueprints if you want to unlock the Guardian ship launch fighters. Relic Towers are the structures in Guardian Ruins and Guardian Structures. They're the object that actually produce these relics, but they do not produce keys. Now, to get a key, if you're going after the SRVs, you have to locate a Guardian Beacon. These are expansive orbital structures. You have to have a ship in order to trigger them. And your ship needs to have some type of energy weapon in order to charge up these little pylons. There will be three of them. You'll have a time limit to go around and hit all of them. So it's done easier in a small ship or a ship launch fighter. This is why people who want to do Guardian Ruins usually have energy weapons on their ships. I'm not sure if a mining laser can trip them. If someone wants to test that out and let me know in the comments. But uh, once you hit all three of these pylons, it unfolds in this really dramatic cinematic sequence. And you have an option to scan a data core that's inside. When it's scanned, the uh, Guardian Beacon will poop out a little Guardian Key. If you're in a large ship, you'll want Collector Limpets because it's kind of hard to get your Anaconda in down under there to actually scoop it. Uh, but a small ship can fit down in there and grab it pretty easy. You then take what you get from a Guardian Beacon to a Guardian Surface Site. Different beacons correspond to different Guardian structures. I believe every Guardian structure that can produce fighter blueprints has a beacon nearby. So uh, this, this list, which is available from the Elite Dangerous Wiki, gives you the Guardian Beacon and its corresponding structure. You just hit these up and uh, you can actually farm guardian beacons once the structure folds back up you can just board flip and repeat the sequence over and over and over to scoop up multiple keys you can then share these keys with other commanders if you want to um, I think you can farm them if you have a fleet carrier in the system you could probably farm up a whole bunch of these and then park it in orbit over a, a guardian facility that has them um, kind of a business opportunity I'm not sure how much of one, and I'm, don't quote me, I'm not sure if you can actually sell Guardian keys. It might be considered a rare commodity. So if someone wants to check that and let me know in the comments, I, I've never actually tried to do that with my fleet carrier. I'm just spitballing business opportunities here. Uh, let's see. There's plenty of tutorial videos on exactly how to proc one of these structures. Again, the Obsidian Ant video uh, here on Canon's website. Canon.Science Codex Guardian Structure. Just hit that up and you can get the rest of what you need. The Sentinels are a threat. If you're alone in an SRV, they can really bug you. And if you're not careful in an SRV, they can kill you. They're pretty durable, so if you're fighting them alone, you should be a competent SRV pilot. This is an intermediate skill activity. Uh, it's best done in groups if you're new, but you can do it alone. You should have a point defense on any ship that you take to a Guardian Ruin because these things launch missiles into the air and your point defense on your ship will shoot them down automatically, which is nice. And, uh, let's see, I don't think there's... Oh, around the different Guardian structures there are destructible pillars that will produce other materials that you need in order to get uh, Guardian technology from the broker. This is what a pylon looks like when it's folded up. This is what an untriggered pylon looks like when it's unfurled. You can read the rest of this article on Canon's website to get all of the details that you need in order to do this effectively, or you can look at some more detailed tutorials. If you guys want me to cover this activity, uh, I'm happy to. Just let me know in the comments, and uh, that's all I got for now, so I will catch you guys later.